you're not having maximum expiration and you're causing a lot of dead space in there. The dead space is um, created from not having enough of this uh, gas being sent out during expirations. So this big dead space is causing you to have an, an altered uh, RV or a very large uh, residual volume or residual means remainder um, in your alveoli or lungs. Number seven says calculate the tidal, uh, tidal volume for this person before and after the bronchodilator therapy. This is a little tricky um, when you try to do your math. First of all, tidal volume equals your alveolar ventilation over frequency plus your dead space. Dead space normally for everyone is 150, so use that value to calculate this. Uh, before and after, when you calculate that, one thing you have to do here is um, convert, change your 4.2 uh, liters into milliliters. Your tidal volume is always calculated in milliliters. You can't use your dead space value when you don't convert your tidal volume uh, value. So I don't know if all of you got this question right, but I hope you did your research. I will uh, grade that later. But tidal volume, remember, you cannot calculate it with your liter. You have to convert liters to milliliters. How you do that? You just times a thousand and that gives you uh, your value in milliliters. So you have 4.2 liters uh, which you times with thousand so that becomes your um, new value here. Uh, divide that with the frequency, in this case it's 16, plus your dead space which is 150 and the value you get here is 412.5 uh, milliliters so that is your tidal volume before treatment tidal volume after treatment is same way you calculate it and you get that to be 421.88 milliliters so those are your two values remember the normal tidal volume is 500 milliliters, so both of them are still lower than normal. Number eight, is this tidal volume normal or altered? I just answered that. It's altered to be normal. They have to be 500 milliliters. Number nine, calculate the minute ventilation for this person before and after the bronchodilator therapy. Uh, minute ventilation, the equation is very, very similar to your uh, alveolar ventilation. The only difference is dead space. You do not have dead space in minute ventilation, uh, but you do have that in your alveoli. So just taking your dead space off your minute ventilation equals your tidal volume times your frequency. Uh, so before treatment, your minute ventilation is 6. point six uh, liters per minute. You get that by um, you times your tidal volume 4.12.5 mils with 16 and you get 6.6. .6. Remember once you get it in um, milliliters you're changing it back into liters in this case for your minute ventilation. Uh, for tidal volume um, second one uh, after uh, treatment your tidal volume was 421 so times that with 16 and you get 6.75 liters per minute again you convert your milliliters to your liters so that was number nine okay um, before 6.6 .6, after 6.75 liters per minute for your minute ventilation number ten is each minute ventilation normal or altered um, in this case, both of those minute ven ventilations are normal. Uh, normal minute ventilation are fi from five, anywhere from five to nine liters per minute. So that's in a normal range. That concludes your case study two. We move on to your respiratory case history three. This talks about a 22-year-old man who was in a motorcycle accident with resultant neck injuries that led to partial paralysis of the upper and lower limbs. Almost immediately his chest felt heavy and he became dyspneic. 
His pulmonary function values were as follows. So after the motorcycle accident, he was partially paralyzed in his upper and lower limbs. He felt a heaviness in his chest which caused him, which made it difficult for him to breathe. So knowing that much, um, we can say, conclude, I mean, you don't have to actually say what disorder this person has, um, uh, but the problem he's facing here is what we call respiratory muscle paralysis. This is where the accident or the trauma, um, motorcycle accidents do that. You know, he hit his uh, neck and the phrenic nerves there were damaged. So um, that's why from all this nerve damage you get this, um, the p muscles that are needed for a respiration. Those are not working anymore, so you don't have, uh, you can't breathe normally anymore without your respiratory muscles to work. You know, you can't have your thoracic cage raising uh, when you don't have your diaphragm contracting or intercostal muscles in that matter contracting. So that's the problem this man, 22 year man, old man is facing. Um, the lab results, pulmonary function tests are as follows. His vital capacity is 650 mils, that's less, he's min, um, lower. Minute ventilation is 6 liters, that's normal. Respiratory rate uh, is 30, which is high. Partial pressure for oxygen is low, 61. Partial pressure for carbon dioxide is high, 47. Um, the question here for number one is what are the values for tidal volume and alveolar ventilation for this individual? Uh, as you, um, you have to assume a normal value for dead space. Compare with normal. Okay, So let's assume the normal value for dead space is 150. Your tidal volume equation is alveolar ventilation over frequency uh, plus 150. So um, if that's if that's your um, that's how you calculate your tidal volume, but we do not have uh, alveolar ventilation given here. So what will you do? If you look at the data, you can see that the um, value they gave was for your minute ventilation. So using that, we also can find tidal volume. Remember, all you have to do is get rid of your dead space. Uh, so without dead, dead space, your tidal volume using minute ventilation equation is tidal volume equals minute ventilation over frequency. So in this case, our minute ventilation is 6 liters. We convert that again to milliliters. Anytime you do tidal volume, you're converting it. So 6 liters, convert that to milliliters. You get 6,000 milliliters over or divide that with your frequency which is 30 in this case and you get a value of 200 milliliters which is your tidal volume and that is a lot lower normal tidal volume is 500 milliliters. B says um, to find alveolar ventilation. Now alveolar ventilation equals tidal volume minus dead space times frequency Tidal volume here that we just calculated was 200 milliliters, deduct 150 from it, and times 30. You get a value of uh, 1500, which you convert back into liters, and you get 1.5 liters per minute for your alveolar ventilation. Remember, the normal is 5.0, so it's a lot lower. Number two says, what is contributing to the decreased alveolar ventilation? Well, you have uh, to calculate alveolar ventilation, you need your tidal volume and fre frequency of breathing. Your tidal volume in this case is very, very low, right? From 500, which is normal, we got 200. So a uh, decrease in tidal volume is causing this person to have a very, very uh, low alveolar ventilation. Number three, which nerves and muscles are involved in this problem? Now, remember, he hit his head. The nerves that um, are in your neck are either your, um, you know, phrenic nerves, which is um, the one that's probably damaged in his case, and you have intercostal nerves as nerves as well that run through there. So those two nerves are the major nerves, phrenic and intercostals. Remember, when any of this is damaged, especially your um, phrenic nerves, which is joining um, in your um, rib cage. Uh, you're going to have problems if this nerve is damaged. You're going to have problems with 
uh, contracting your diaphragm, which is why you can't con when you can't contract your diaphragm, you can't do normal breathing anymore. And intercostal nerves of